Tonight, we've come west for the richest harness race in California history. From Los Alamitos Racecourse, it's the aged horse and gelding pace of the Breeders' Crown with a purse of over $300,000. Breeders' Crown 86 is being brought to you by North American Standard Bread Sales Company. By the nationwide investment firm of First Jersey Securities. Come grow with us. And by Castleton Farms, a tradition of excellence. Last year, in his sophomore season, Forrest Skipper paced in the shadow of the great Nihilator and was 8 for 24. But this season, it's a different story. He's undefeated in 12 starts with over $430,000 in earnings this year, 840,000 lifetime. Tonight, can Forrest Skipper clinch Horse of the Year honors with his 13th straight victory, or will race 13 be unlucky for the four-year-old pacing star, Forrest Skipper? A cool night, a fast track, and it's been a big night here in Southern California with the Angels-Red Sox game just over at Anaheim Stadium, about seven miles east of the racetrack. And I imagine that a lot of the folks who were at nearby Disneyland this afternoon are here at Los Al to enjoy a night of harness racing and see stop number four in the 1986 Breeders' Crown Series. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Johnson. Ellie Sarama and Alan Kirschenbaum will be joining me later in the broadcast. And tonight, many think that the overall track record of 153 and two-fifths is in jeopardy. And almost everybody thinks that Forrest Skipper is going to keep his 1986 record unblemished. But has the traveling and the time trials and the racing been too much? Is he vulnerable? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to find out if he is Horse of the Year, too, after we take this brief time out. And then we'll return to Los Alamitos and the Breeders' Crown 86. Stay tuned. 30, 40 seconds back. <clears throat> this is a post parade. They've, they're starting a post parade. That's just lousy. Trip on Joey. So our results are coming out of the back for the fifth race. The 301 pound of $350 Reader Crown. Pacer, four years old and up for Morning line here at Los Alamitos. The entry of Broadway Express and what's next? Eight to one. Lustra's big guy starts at 12 to one with driver Bill Gale. Number three, four skipper is the starting morning line choice at six to five with Lucian Fontaine, chairman of the board 15 with Ray Remond, staff director with Dave Wall at six to one. The number six horse, Armbro Dallas at five with Ron Waples, Dignitarian at four with Earl Cruz, and Armbro Cadet with D.R. Ackerman at ten to one. And take a look at the tote board. We see that of the show pool, which has $16,376 in it, $15,285 bet to show on the three horse, four skipper. They call that the bit of a bridge jumper. They call this my co-host, Ellie Sarama. Ellie, with this big purse, not only the biggest in California harness racing history, but the biggest nationwide for age pacers. I guess all those million dollar yearlings are trying to get back their purchase price. Oh, not true, Dave. None of these horses cost more than $60,000 as a yearling, all the way down to lustrous big guy who was purchased for $4,500. Together, they've made $6.6 .6 million in purses and won 188 races. Well, they're on the track for the post parade alley. Let's take a look at the full field. Number one is Broadway Express with Mickey McNichol. Racing almost exclusively in New York Open Company. He's been in the Breeders' Crown before as a two-year-old. Finished second to Dragon's Lair, beating out Nihilator, who finished third. And the only Roan in Breeders' Crown history. Coupled in the wagering with what's next? Number 1A with John Platino. He shares the season's mark with Forrest Skipper of 151 and 3 on a mile track for four-year-old Pacers. He's won several Opens, but along with his entry mate, has the outside 
electric post, and it's a definite handicap. Let's take a look now at Lustra's Big Guy, the number two horse with Bill Gale. He has over 700000 in lifetime earnings, one of the dominant free-for-allers at the Meadowlands. With several wins to his credit, he draws post position one and hasn't been defeated from there yet. And we'll talk more about post positions a bit later. Let's take a look now at Forrest Skipper, Lucian Fontaine, number three. Proven himself time and time again, done everything asked of him. He's done a lot of traveling, had a long, tough campaign, but I still don't think they can beat him. I think he's in top form. Number four is chairman of the board, and Ray Remen drives his brother, Gordy Remen, is the train. One of the few to make a million in one season as a three-year-old, winning major stakes events, but this year he's been defeated several times by Forrest Skipper, and he has to face him tonight again. And he also has to face staff director with Dave Wall, the five horse. Last year, this horse defeated Forrest Skipper in the North American Cup up in Canada and had a great season. This year, he's had some physical problems and only eight starts, but he's won his last four, and he seems to be back in shape now. Armbro Dallas is number six and Ron Waples is the driver trainer. Well he'll always be remembered as one of the horses that defeated Nihilator with almost a million in lifetime earnings. He's won his last two out of his three starts which were stakes events in Canada. And Dignitarian handled by the brothers Cruz, Jimmy Cruz Jr. the trainer and Earl Cruz driver. He holds the track record here at Las Alamitas of 153 and 4 for four-year-old Pacers. He raced in the Breeders' Crown last year as a three-year-old where he finished seventh but tonight he comes in as the second choice morning line. And Armbro Cadet driven by 28-year-old D.R. Ackerman and trained by Father Doug Ackerman. This is a top-quality open pacer raced in two previous Breeders' Crown. As a three-year-old, he finished third, and as a four-year-old, second to Division Street. He's won 10 out of his 20 starts this year and has all the credentials to be here. Thank you, Ellie, for the introductions to the nine horses in the Breeders' Crown event. Now, let's take a look at the leading contenders and see what Alan Kirschenbaum, another member of our broadcast team, thinks of the field. Thank you, Dave. Usually we highlight three contenders at the start of the Breeders' Crown races, and tonight's going to be no different. Our top three contenders tonight are Forrest Skipper, Forrest Skipper, and you guessed it, Forrest Skipper. The skeptics are not quite convinced. That's their job, I guess, but I am. Undefeated in 1986, Forrest Skipper has little left to prove except to the Horse of the Year voters. But what of the rumors of the horse's physical condition, his weight loss due to his grueling schedule of racing, traveling, and trialing? Wishful thinking, I believe. Idle hopes. Here you'll see him win the Graduate Series Final in 151-3, a co-season's record. The horse looks magnificent. Tribute to the care and management of Lucian Fontaine and his son, Mark. What of his ability to win a premier race without a paramutual tune-up the week before? Uh-uh. Forrest Skipper has done that twice already in 1986. No, I'm afraid that Forrest Skipper is destined to add the Breeders' Crown Crystal Trophy to owner Forrest Bartlett's already large collection. Forrest Bartlett, the owner of Forrest Skipper, is there any room left in your house for yet another trophy? Yes, there's still room. Uh, it's full, but I'll make room. You've been to every race that Forrest Skipper has raced in his entire career, and as each race has gone by and the horse has gotten better and better, has it become more nerve-wracking to see him race? Oh, yes. Pressure's tremendous. Uh, and tonight, I'm, I'm just as nervous as I've been, I think. Are you going to be happy when the horse's career is finally over and he's set to begin a career in the stud barn? Oh, I'm ready to slow down myself. <laughs> sure am. Forrest Bartlett, good luck. Thank you very much. Dave? One to five is the price on Forrest Skipper, so Forrest Bartlett and all of his friends and family in Shiloh, North Carolina, I guess you won't breathe easier until the race is over, but we'll be back with the race right after this. Taking a look at the odds update, all nine horses, the betting entry 23 to 1, four skipper as you see is the choice at 2 to 5, and Dignitarian getting some support at 3 to 1. You know, on each of these Breeders' Crown broadcasts, we try and take a few minutes away from the action here and focus in on one of the jewels of our sport. Now, on previous shows, it's been a driver and an owner. Tonight, it's a race, a gem of a race from the past that, coincidentally, had many of the stories, principles, and people in tonight's contest. Well, as a three-year-old, as you know, Forrest Skipper was really outstanding. He beat every horse except Nihilator. My horse was getting very strong at the end of the year. I had won the week before, I believe, a uh, fifth faster than Nihilator. My horse was getting good, and I thought I really had a good shot of beating him. That race was almost a year ago, but it has special relevance tonight as many of the principles were the same. At Garden State Park, it was the inaugural Pilgrim Stakes, and Nihilator had drawn the far outside, while Forrest Skipper had drawn two spots 
inside of him. Here they leave the gate. Annihilator, as you can see, driven by Billy O'Donnell on the far outside. Far skipper just inside, looking for the lead. Well, uh, right now, as we're going in first turn, I'm uh, about uh, fifth on the outside. Right now, I'm following Marauder. I believe part of the entry is on the front end. Uh, I'm just kind of waiting because I know that Annihilator is behind me. And now I'm just starting to follow my cover and uh, just biding my time. And the first quarter in you know that you're going to make the lead right about now. At least you think Dick Richardson's going to go. How did you feel about Annihilator coming at you? Did you think you were going to let him go or make him drive on? No, as you can see here, I'm not in a hurry at all to get to the front. I know that Annihilator's behind me. I know he's getting covered behind me, but I felt this. If I get to the front faster, Annihilator would bend my throat that much sooner. So I was just taking my time, and I had at no time any thought of letting him go. Now, some people might say your best bet is to let Annihilator go and sit in the two hole, but you decided not to do that. But look, O'Donnell Veer's laying back a little bit. Now he didn't really make a challenge at me. Now my horse is pacing very free as uh, as we're going you know, around the last turn, approaching the three-quarter pole. First half, 56 and one, which was not over my head. I'd went faster than that a week before. It looks like over here I'm going to put Annihilator away. I mean, my horse is digging in, and Annihilator just right at my wheel. Was Annihilator the only horse you were worried about right here? Yes, Annihilator was the only horse I was worried about before the race and uh, this is the way it was. Right now, over here, uh, well, let's go to the stretch call for the program with Ralph Sorocco. Annihilator takes the lead from Forrest Skipper. He's starting to pull away like a champion. In hot pursuit, here comes Armbro Dallas. Armbro Dallas could challenge Annihilator. These two are battling to the wire. Could this be an upset? Armbro Dallas upsets Annihilator. Armbro Dallas was in the right place at the right time. He might be in the right place at the right time tonight. In the Pilgrim, Lucian, you were driving to beat Annihilator. Tonight, there's going to be eight guys out there driving to beat you. Can they do it? I don't think so. I think my horse is uh, very strong. He's been racing very well all year. He showed he's a super horse, and I believe that uh, he will, if he's himself, he will beat this field tonight. In a race like this, you know, when you're a horse, you're the outstanding horse, the outstanding pacer, you don't worry about how much the other horse is going to go if he can beat you because you've been beating him all year. Of course, you want your horse to be at his best, and that's what I'm looking for in Forrest Skipper tonight. And if he is, I'm very sure we're going to win or at least got a heck of a good shot. And the folks here think that he'll do it. They keep putting the money in on Forrest Skipper. He is now one to five, and we'll be back with more after these important messages. We've been watching the horses in program order with the entry of 1A1 Broadway Express and 1A What's Next, but this is the post position order drawn by Lott, and as you can see, bad luck for Joe Caraluzzi, who won the Breeders' Crown event just two weeks ago. He drew the outside two post positions, eight and nine for Broadway Express and What's Next. Well, Alan, let's uh, go over to our colleague, Alan Kirschenbaum, and see what his analysis of the race is going to be. Alan? The first three Breeders' Crowns this year were won by the horse that got out of the gate fastest of all. And don't think Lucian Fontaine isn't aware of that. He put a blind bridle on Forrest Skipper just so that'll get him as charged up as he possibly can be. And you'll see Lucian and Forrest Skipper rocket ship out of the starting gate today. Dave, I don't think they're going to catch him. He's going to go on out of there. He might let a horse like Broadway Express or a horse like Staff Director go early, but they are not going to catch him at the end of the mile. I think we're going to be talking to Lucian Fontaine in about a minute and 52 seconds. Dave? A purse of over $300,000, and Ellie, a lot more than that on the line. Much more than that. If he remains undefeated and wins this Breeders' Crown, I think he's a shoe in for Horse of the Year honors. He's been syndicated for five to six million, and if he wins, his value goes up. And an interesting affair here, a family affair in, in some sets. We have two sets of brothers, the Remins and the Cruises, two father and son combinations, and uh, on the family side, uh, on the family side, uh, a little bit of a horse uh, interesting story. Well, Armbro Dallas and Armbro Cadet are full brothers, and this is the first time that full brothers will compete against each other in a Breeders' Crown event. And we're about ready for the start, so let's go to the top of the stands, and the voice of Las Los Alamitos here is track announcer Jim Byers. Well, thank you, Dave, and good afternoon. Good evening, everyone, as they approach the starting point midway down the back stretch. Just moments away from the start of the Breeders' Crown. And they're off. Staff director is heading toward the front. Broadway Express on the outside is gaining. 
Forrest Skipper was away fast right along the inside, and Broadway Express is going to take the lead. Forrest Skipper moves into second. Staff director parked out third. Lustra's big guy along the inside is now moving into third. Staff director is dropping back, looking to drop in. The field advances to the top of the stretch the first time, and now Lucian Fontaine brings Forrest Skipper to the front on the outside. Broadway Express, the Rhone, is second along the rail. Lustra's big guy, third. Chairman of the board at the rail, fourth. Staff director parked out fifth. The quarter went 28 and 2. Pass the stands the first time. Forrest Skipper on the lead by a little more than a length. Broadway Express is second. Lustra's big guy, third. Staff director, fourth. Dignitarian moves first over fifth on the outside. Chairman of the board at the rail, sixth. What's next is seventh. Armbro Dallas, eighth. And Armbro Cadet on the outside trails. Around the clubhouse turn. Forrest Skipper is on the front end by a length. Broadway Express right behind in second. The half mile time, 57 and 2. They move on to the back stretch, and it's Forrest Skipper by a length and a half. Broadway Express along the inside second. Dignitarian up on the outside, uncovered in third. Lustra's big guy along the inside fourth. What's next is fifth, followed by Armbro Cadet up to sixth. Staff director seventh at the rail. Armbro Dallas is eighth. Chairman of the board trails in ninth. Into the last turn, Forrest Skipper opens up a two-length lead. Broadway Express is still second. Dignitarian up on the outside third. Three quarters, 125 and four. The field turns for home, and Forrest Skipper leads the way by a clear two lengths. Broadway Express is second. Lustra's big guy into third along the inside. Dignitarian on the outside fourth. Staff director at the rail needs room in fifth. They're in the stretch, heading toward the finish, and Forrest Skipper leads the way by two lengths. Broadway Express toward the rail, tries to hold second. Here comes between horses, Lustra's big guy and Dignitarian, but it's Forrest Skipper in front. Forrest Skipper takes the Breeders' Crown by some two lengths. Broadway Express was second. It'll be a photo for show. The mile time, 153 and four. Two-fifths of a second off the track record, but uh, what a great performance by the brilliant four-year-old pacer, Forrest Skipper, as Lucian Fontaine took command when he wanted to and just never looked back. Elliot was quite a performance. It looked like the rest of the field was just scared off right from the start. They certainly were. Lucian made a tremendous move. He, re he retook before the quarter pole, and the rest of the race was his. He cut his own fractions. They were down the half in 57 and 2. They come home a fast 56 and 2. He paced his last quarter in 28 seconds flat. Lucian was just hand driving this horse all the way to the wire. It looked like Broadway Express at one point had a little bit of horse, but nothing nowhere as near to catch Forrest Skipper. It was a tremendous race by him, and he just wins for fun here. And Broadway Express does get the play spot. It's a photo for show. Broadway Express coupled in the wagering with what's next, but it was all for a skipper, at least from soon after the start, right to the finish line. And I guess we should send Alan Kirschenbaum to Iceland. It looks like he knows what he's doing. We'll be back with all the excitement and the color and the post-race action from Los Alamitos after these important messages. So come on back. They have just uh, looked at the photograph and found that Lustra's big guy was third. The prices are not up there. It's still unofficial with Forrest Skipper, uh, the unofficial winner. Broadway Express second, Lustra's big guy third. And while we're waiting for the prices, here's Alan Kirschenbaum and a very happy Loosh. It may be unofficial, but here we are on the Lucian Fontaine show. Lucian, I knew you were going to leave with that horse. I didn't think you'd let anybody go. What made you decide to let Mickey McNichol go early? Well, you know, there was no use to burn my horse at the first quarter. I know that Broadway Express got a lot of early speed. I thought staff director would leave. I didn't want to be sitting third. I made room for staff director. And, uh, okay, I made room for staff director, and, and then I got to the... Um, let Mickey McNichols go, as you're going to see over here. And uh, then my main thing is to get control of the race. So I knew Mickey just want to get position with a horse like Forrest Skipper. Most people want to get a good trip. So out I came again to uh, regain the lead in 28 and 2, which was not uh, really too fast. And my horse over here is very comfortable. We're watching the race on isolation. Here we see Forrest Skipper sent to the lead by Lucian Fontaine, and you're going to get a little bit of a breather in the second quarter. Yes, I sure do, and uh, it, you know, really, uh, uh, besides winning all the races wherever I go with this horse, everybody expect like track record, and I'm all for it. But at the same time, you'd have to have compassion for the horse. So I wanted to go as fast as I had to to uh, win, and I'm very glad that it's a track record for four-year-old pacers. You picked up the pace a little bit in the third panel, and Broadway Express is breathing very heavily down your neck. 
back. Did you ever think that Mickey's horse was going to give you a test towards the end of the mile? Well, Broadway Express is a tough little horse. He's just coming back from New York with back-to-back uh, -back wins in the open pace, beat all the best paces over there. He's getting the super trip. But the third quarter, I'm stringing him along a little bit, so I didn't want to just get out brushed the last quarter. My horse is pacing over here pretty handy. And as you know, last quarter, I'm going to be uh, pacing real good. And it just took the sting out of Broadway Express, which I didn't want to just wait for the last eight of a mile. See, I'm driving over here. And I know Broadway Express is right behind me, but I think it's a little bit too much for him. Forest Skipper is just a little bit too much for most of these pacers. A lot of people always judge how good a horse is by after a front end trip like that, how much he has left at the end. How much gas was left in Forest Skipper's gas tank? I'm driving Forest Skipper out over here, but he's really pacing strong. If he had another quarter of a mile to go, he would do it. And I sure hope that the people that uh, watch him race tonight again would really consider him for the horse of the year because he deserves it. Lucian, congratulations. You've done a marvelous job with the horse, and you've really given fans across North America a treat. Best of luck. It's my pleasure, and thank you very much, Alan, and I hope to see you soon. Let's go back to Dave Johnson. And on the board, it is official. Forrest Skipper pays 260, 240, and 210. Yes, that bridge jumper collected. Broadway Express, 740 and 210. Luster's big guy, 210. I'm sure there was a minus show pool. But Forrest Skipper, who is trained by son Mark and driven by dad Lucian, comes home a big winner this evening. And Ellie, what about Horse of the Year honors at this point? Oh, I think he's got it all sewed up, Dave. He's won everything. He's done everything they've asked him to do. And I think he is definitely Horse of the year. Forrest Skipper is the winner this evening in 153 and 4. 153 and 4. The Breeders' Crown 86 has been brought to you by Los Salamitos Race Course. By the North American Standard Bread Sales Company. And by the nationwide investment firm of First Jersey Securities. Come grow with us. Be sure to be with us one week from tonight at 8.30 Eastern Time for the rich two-year-old Philly Trot in what shapes up as a great contest in Breeders' Crown competition. Canterbury Downs in Minnesota will be the host for this challenge for these young ladies next Friday night. Once again, the winner of tonight's Breeders' Crown is Forrest Skipper.